Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning. Madam Clerk, are you ready? Yes, Mr. Chair. I saw Senator Sampson, I'm not sure if he's still with us or not, but I saw him earlier, I think. There he is, great, perfect. All righty, we'll go ahead, we'll get started. I'd like to convene today's GE meeting, uh, Thursday, April 15, 2021, 10 a.m. Uh, meeting to uh, act on bills referred to us for final action. Uh, are there remarks by the chair, Senator Flex, or any comments? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Master Francesco, Senator Sampson, any comments? Saying none, okay, great, we'll go ahead, we'll get started. Uh, first bill, uh, section three, or referred bills to consider final action, substitute for House Bill 5310, an act concerning the data privacy breaches referred to as gen 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 General Law Committee. Is there a motion? Senator Flexer makes a motion to JF this bill to the floor. Second by Representative Fishbein. Motion made by Senator Flexer, second by Representative Fishbein. Uh, the bill comes to us from the General Law Committee. I believe we got out of that committee unanimously. Is there any comments or questions on the, on the underlying bill? Representative Fishbein, your hand is raised, the floor is yours. Yes, sir. Thank you, and uh, good morning to you um, on this very beautiful Thursday morning. Um, you know, I think that when a company says to their potential uh, contractees, you cannot do business with me unless you disclose certain information, information that's not necessary to effectuate the contract, and then that business that's in control of that information, that personal information, through whatever form uh, that information gets out, and there's identity theft cases, that there should be notice, quick notice, and um, that's a portion of this bill, and um, cooperation, uh, where if an investigation is done by the Attorney General's office, that certain investigating authorities are able to get that information to stop that harm to the individual. So I'm fully in support of this bill and I would ask my colleagues to support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Fishbein, for your comments. Any further questions or comments on the, on the underlying bill? Uh, seeing none, will the clerk please take the roll? House Bill 5310, JF to floor. Flexor. Senator Flexer votes yes. Fox. Representative Fox votes yes. Haskell. Senator Haskell. Thomas. Representative Thomas votes yes. Sampson. Senator Sampson votes yes. Master Francesco. Representative Master Francesco votes yes. Blumenthal. Blumenthal votes yes. Carpino. Carpino votes yes. Representative, one more time, please. Representative Carpino votes yes. Thank you. Fishbine. Representative Fishbein votes yes. And I didn't see the yellow box, so I'm going to do it again. Representative Fishbein votes yes. Thank you. France. Representative France. Haddad. Representative Haddad. Labriola. Representative Labriola. McCarthy Vehi. Representative McCarthy, as a passenger, votes yes. Thank you. McCrory. Senator McCrory. Morin Bello. Representative Morin Bello. Palm. Representative Palm votes yes. Rosario. Representative Rosario votes yes. Santiago. 
Representative Santiago votes yes. Slap. Senator Slap. Senator Haskell. All set, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on, item number two, an act concerning price preferences for veteran-owned business and state contracting. So refer to us in the Veterans Committee. Is there a motion? Senator Flexer makes a motion to JF this bill to the floor. Rep. Thomas, second. Motion made by Senator Flexer, second by Representative Thomas. Any comments or discussion on the underlying bill? Representative Master Francesca, your hand is raised. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, just a couple quick questions for clarification on this, if I may. Um, if I understand this correctly, currently there's an existing law in place that allows DAS to give a price preference of up to 15% for veteran owned micro businesses. Would you be able to um, define micro businesses for me, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. Thank you, Representative. I believe micro business, and I'm going off the OLR report, is those that with a gross revenue of up to $3 million. Okay, thank you. And um, through you, Mr. Chairman, so uh, as a micro business have to have a 51% ownership from by a veteran? Would, did that change at all? What is the criteria for? Is it just a 51 or is it just... Um, the gross revenues up to three million. Does the fifty-one percent ownership or any what percentage of ownership would qualify for the micro business, Mr. Chairman? I believe I, I believe the the bill um, reclassified veteran-owned business to be one that with at least fifty-one percent ownership, being held by one or more veterans. And I'm not sure that helps or not. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it doesn't. I'm just as I'm reading it, it says that. Um, the, the existing law, which was not would, would not be changed by this particular bill, um, gives the price price preference of up to fifteen percent of veteran owned micro businesses. I'm just trying to determine if what percentage of ownership that has to be. So if now this new bill is at at least fifty one percent ownership, did, does that also qualify for the micro businesses? And I just I guess when I was reading the language, I didn't see anything in there. I, I think, Representative, if you go to the, I'm looking back at the bill language now, lines 50 to, I believe it's 54, 57, identify a veteran-owned business, and then micro, micro business is identified line 60 to approximately 64. Okay. So I believe it. I, I think it's 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 making another, another another classification. I believe. So we're adding on. Is you? Uh, it could appear that way. That sounds like they're adding on a classification. Um, and does it re, does it interfere at all with the with the other one? Is what I guess it was. I'm just questioning. I don't. I'm not sure what you mean by interfere. I I, I would. I wouldn't. Based on the, the intent of the bill, I doubt it would interfere with it. Might might just make at a, at a separate classification. So I, I doubt it would. I doubt it would technically interfere. Right. I see okay. what you're saying, but I'm not entirely sure if it's interfering yeah, yeah. or we're describing. Yeah, and I just um, I was just wondering what the intent is if this this law if this is already in place. Um, so it's only uh, because it only applies to businesses up to three million dollars. So I guess I would like what I'd say if a, if the business is over three million dollars, then those businesses, if they have a fifty one percent ownership, would be entitled to the ten percent. Am I understanding that correctly, Mr. Chairman? I I believe you You are, I believe so. Okay, so I am reading it correctly. So basically, even if a business today is does not have 51% ownership or they do, they would still be entitled to the 15% um, price preference. 
based on the current law. That's correct. Yeah. Well, okay. Right. So my question is a business today that has a gross revenues up to $3 million that are not 51% ownership would not qualify, would still, would not, would now be at the 10%. I know it's confusing. I'm not trying to make, make but I'm just trying to understand, is there a reduction or an increase for, and for whom? I believe that the micro business still needs to be veteran owned, which identified in lines um, I, th I think I think it's I think it's reclassifying what it means to be veteran owned. So yeah. the, the veteran owned component will now be 51% ownership is held by one or more veterans. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm confusing more or clarifying. I know, yeah, I, I understand, Mr. Chairman. The, the reason why I'm, I'm just questioning is that, you know, it, it, so obviously I support our veterans 100%. And here we're again making, a, we're categorizing which veterans could uh, qualify for something and which ones don't based on the type of the, um, the value of their business as opposed to the value of the service they gave to our country. A veteran is a veteran, whether or not you are, you own 51% of it, um, regardless of the gross revenues of your business. And this is the, and I always have these problems with these types of bills. When you give preference to a certain group um, based on many things. And I truly believe that our veterans, while I support them a thousand percent, I think they have sacrificed so much for this great country but I don't think they made those sacrifices to treat people differently, right? They treat they they made those sacrifices so we can all be treated equally. And, and if you really look at it and you break it down in this particular bill, you're treating that the veterans differently. You're, they're kind of competing with themselves, right? So if you're this type of veteran, you get this. If you're this type of veteran, you get that. And that's where I really have an issue with that. So I truly understand the intent of this bill. I, you know, our veterans have done so much. My goodness, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. But again, we're putting them into categories actually within themselves. It's like saying, um, well, I guess I, could, I couldn't even explain it, but I, I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, putting veterans themselves into a separate category. It's just... It's, it's just not fair. And I don't believe that that's the intent that they did when they made the sacrifices for this country. So um, those are my concerns, uh, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to get that out there, but th thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator Sampson, hand raised, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just wanna echo the, the, uh, the comments of my co-ranking member. Um, reading through this bill, there's some confusion about what this bill aims to achieve. First off, um, we already um, have a um, preference uh, in awarding contracts to veteran-owned businesses if they um, are uh, businesses with gross revenues up to $3 million, and that preference is 15%. And yet this bill is going apparently to create a new set of preferences for veteran-owned businesses um, when it comes to market orders or contracts, but this preference is 10%. And so that's a question about the disparity there. Um, there's also a concern I have reading the OLR analysis. Um, it speaks of a related bill, House Bill 5592, which passed out of the Veterans Affairs Committee, which is going to redefine the term veteran uh, to not just mean someone who is honorably discharged, but it's going to include a bunch of other um, categories. Um, I don't know exactly what the details are with those, but that is something that concerns me uh, because this bill kind of hinges on that bill, uh, which I think is an unusual set of circumstances. Um, who knows what will ultimately pass and become law in the end, but 
uh, when you have one piece of legislation depending on another, that's, that's um, it's something to, to at least be watchful for. Um, and finally, I, I will just um, reiterate um, Representative Mastro Francesco's comments. Uh, you won't find more uh, patriotic and supportive uh, people of our country and our military than myself um, and the representative. Uh, we love our country and uh, we attend a great many veteran functions and we have veterans in our families. We are extremely supportive and um, thankful to those people who have sacrificed for our country. But I don't believe that they sacrifice for our country for the purpose of creating a system that um, treats people differently in our laws and how contracts are awarded. Um, we've had a lot of conversation in this committee this year about how we are gonna treat people differently. And we are going to set up quotas for how people are assigned to boards and commissions based on their race and gender and so forth. This is just another example of dividing people up instead of recognizing that everyone is an individual person and that they should be treated on their own merit and that we should be ignoring their gender uh, and their identity. Um, recognizing someone as a veteran actually is, is, is far more worthy of recognition than, than treating people differently based on race and gender, in my opinion. But it still doesn't rise to the level of uh, awarding contracts uh, in a way that is different depending on the size of their business or in relation to other people. Um, I just don't think that that's what our country stands for. I don't think that's what our military um, uh, stands for when it fights uh, to defend our principles as Americans. Um, and uh, as a result, I, I have some problems with this bill also. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator, for your comments. Representative Fish, by your hand, raise the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I have to associate myself with the comments of my uh, ranking members, with the exception of the fact that they stand above all else with regard to support of our military. I would represent that I stand shoulder to shoulder with them uh, in support of, of our military. Uh, Mr. Chairman, am I to understand that this bill, the way this works is if there's a two competing businesses, one being uh, veteran owned under the criteria of the bill and one not being veteran owned and a uh, contract uh, RFP. Uh, well, no, it would be a, it would be a, a bid, a, um, a solicitation of a bid um, goes out that if uh, the non veteran owned business bid $90,000 on the project and the veteran owned business bid $100,000 on the project, that the bid numbers would be adjusted. They would both come down to, to the 90 and the contract would be awarded to the veteran owned business. Is, is that basically what's going on here? Thank you for the question. I'll say math is not my strong suit, but I believe your, I believe your analysis is correct. And whether or not, whether or not I'd be ultimately rewarded, I think this, this Bill speaks about giving a price preference. I'm not sure if ultimately it would be awarded to the veteran business, but it, uh, the veteran business would receive the price preference as, as indicated in the bill. Okay. And I, you know, I do remember that our constitution or well, declaration of independence says that all men are created equal. Um, and the interpretation is that not only men, but women, right? I, I got that. Um, I just have a lot of problems with this, you know, conceptually, you know, what happens when one of those businesses is owned by a, a minority or a disabled individual. And um, now we have this selected class of veterans uh, under this criteria is uh, given a leg up, given an adjustment to uh, through government fiat. <sighs> equalized and you know conceptually you run the risk of the public policy being and the, the takeaway is that that contract was awarded to that individual merely because they're a veteran and that activity leads to people having disgruntled opinions against those individuals that get 
a leg up from government. Private industry should be able to activate and compete on a level plane without government sticking its its hand into that and you know bids that come in should be bids that come in and everyone is equal at that bidding process but you know i think that bills like this create over time a level of animus and jealousy um with the unbalancing of that level playing field so uh, i just wanted that to be known so thank you mr chairman thank you for coming representative fishbein representative bloom with all your hands raised the floor is yours thank you mr chair i have one question for you first um this 10 percent uh reduction would this be separate and in addition to the current 15% reduction for micro businesses that are known micro businesses. Thank you, Representative. The current 15% reduction remains unchanged. So I believe the answer is yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I'll just make a brief comment. Uh, I certainly respect the perspectives of my colleagues who have just spoken before me, but I wanted to give a little bit of my own perspective on this bill and some of the issues behind it. You know, as both someone who was a military veteran and also someone who worked in a veterans legal services clinic, I've seen a variety of the ways in which the experiences of veterans have either disadvantaged them or advantaged them in ways that are not recognized in the private market to do jobs and to run businesses. Um, and in ways that would make this bill beneficial. Uh, I heard a couple of my colleagues mentioning the companion bill that would expand the definition of veteran to include certain individuals who were discharged under certain conditions other than honorable. And I just wanna say as somebody who has participated in the military justice system and someone who has worked representing veterans in the military justice system, that I think that bill is extremely well advised and well founded. One thing that I've seen and many veterans can attest to this is that military justice usually runs according to what is good for the command. That does not always mean that individuals experience a full measure of justice. And we've seen wide disparities on racial lines historically, on gender lines historically, on other lines historically and how the, just, the military justice system, system has treated individual veter veterans. And as we all know, the discharge status of a veteran can have tremendous consequences for their employability, for their ability to get loans or start a business or do other things that we want them to be able to do. So I think that that bill, which does expand this definition of veteran to help recognize these disparities in the military justice system and the, I guess, past injustices that have happened, whether it was through a broad swath of uh, issues related to m minor psychological disorders or acute depression that were categorized as personality disorders by the Navy because it was convenient. And then had, this had vast consequences down the road on uh, individual veterans who were discharged out of the military when they should have just gotten treatment. There have been other issues related to drugs, especially marijuana, where individuals have been treated very harshly. And some of them have testified before the Veterans Affairs Committee on this issue uh, when it was really not warranted. And this has had really deleterious effects on their post-military careers uh, or other issues, and especially in the past. But Continuing on to the present, the military justice system has handed down vastly different discharge grades for certain disciplinary actions to people of color than it has to white veterans. And that's something I think we need to keep in mind. Um, and I also think it's important to recognize the reasons why having served in the military, while it gives you a set of skills that are often quite advantageous in the business world or in a variety of different trades, 
often it puts you at a, different, at a disadvantage, especially as an enlisted member of the military. First of all, some people have biases against military veterans. They may have un, uh, unwarranted views that they are risky in some way. The veterans may suffer from visible or invisible wounds of war that may put them at a disadvantage. They also often are not able to make employers or business owners or uh, lenders understand exactly the value of what they learned in the military. And that's something we've worked on over the past uh, 10 or so years in a way that we've, I think, actually dealt in a very strong way with veterans unemployment and veterans homelessness in this state. And so I'd like to see that continue. So those are just some of the reasons why I think these bills are very well advised and well founded uh, and why I'll be supporting them today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Representative, for your comments and your service. Senator Flexer, your hand is raised, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to speak um, strongly in support of this bill. When I first became chair of this committee, I was also the chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee um, for four years, and I worked for a long time on the issues that are under debate with this current bill this morning. And I want to associate myself strongly with the wonderful remarks of Representative Blumenthal. And I just want to add to the conversation, um, I won't belabor the point, but the point of discussion this morning with regard to the other than honorable discharges, uh, this legislature debated issues to expand benefits to those veterans for all the reasons that Representative Blumenthal just explained so clearly. And when we did that, that vote was unanimous. And when we expanded the existing law to provide the provision for micro businesses that's in uh, that's referenced in the OLR report with regard to this bill this morning, that vote was also unanimous in the House and the Senate. I hope that we can all choose to support this bill this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator, for your comments. Representative Thomas, your hand is raised, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do have a question, but uh, before I say that, my uh, grandfather, father, brother, and sister are all veterans, um, and I'm very proud of that. So I, too, I appreciate your comments, Representative Blumenthal, um, and I thank you for uh, making that position clear, and I thank you for your service. Um, I have a question about the bill. I know when this was in uh, the Veterans Committee, the Connecticut Airport Authority submitted testimony about saying how some of their bidding requirements are in conflict. This law would be in conflict with federal statutes that require them, um, I'm looking at their testimony, uh, that prevents them from giving any price preferences. And they asked for a carve out in the bill. So I was just wondering if you know if the committee took that up. I didn't see it in the final language. Um, do you have any information about that? No, thank you for your question. Unfortunately, I do not have any, any information for you, but I, I'm sure it's been looked into. Uh, I'm not sure to what extent it has been, but I, I, I do not have any further information. I apologize. No problem. Um, I'll be voting yes today, but uh, I just wanted to make sure we continue that conversation. Thank you, Representative Thomas. Representative Master Pesca, hands raised. The floor is yours for the second time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the second time. Just, um, just a few comments. I, Ms. Representative Bloomfield, I truly appreciate what your comments are, and I, and I agree. Um, you know, and, and Representative Thomas, I think everybody here on this committee has a, a relative or knows somebody who is a veteran, and, and my goodness, they are so important to us. But my my concern on this particular bill is if if that was the issue, and we were really trying to help the veterans, why? not just take the existing law of the 15% and it just expand it to veterans. And, and, and honestly, that's what my concern is. So I don't think anybody on this committee or any of my colleagues have anything um, ill against veterans. And certainly we wanna do everything that we can to help them. Um, but, but in this particular language, it just kind of goes the other way for me and it de defeats the purpose. But um, I truly appreciate everybody's comments. I, and I know in everybody's heart here, they truly appreciate our veterans and, and that is, 
true with, uh, with me as well. So just wanted to end with those few comments, uh, Mr. Chairman, but thank you very much. Thank you, Representative. Any further questions or comments, members of the committee? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? House Bill 5736, JF to Flexer. Senator Flexer votes yes. Fox. Representative Fox votes yes. Haskell. Senator Haskell. Thomas. Representative Thomas votes yes. Sampson. Senator Sampson. Mastro Francesco. Representative Mastro Francesco votes no. Blumenthal. Representative Blumenthal votes yes. Carpino. Carpino votes yes. One more time, Representative, please. Carpino votes yes. Thank you. Fishbein. Representative Fishbein votes no. Friends. Representative Friends. Haddad. Representative Haddad. Labriola. Representative Labriola. McCarthy Vehi. Representative McCarthy Vehi votes yes. McCrory. Senator McCrory. Morin Bello. Representative Morin Bello. Palm. Representative Palm votes yes. Rosario. Representative Rosario votes yes. Santiago. Santiago votes yes. Slap. Senator Slap votes yes. All set, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We will be holding votes open. Uh, the time not time yet, yet yet to be determined, but we'll uh, votes will be held open, which will let you know at the end of the meeting how long. Up next, uh, moving on, item number subsection three, item number three, House Bill uh, six one zero eight, uh, sub um, an act concerning Board of Education vacancies. Is there a motion? Senator Flexer makes a motion to take up this bill to the floor. Second. Motion made by Senator Flexer. Second by Representative McCarthy Vehi. Are there questions or comments on the underlying bill? Representative Master Francesca, Francesca, your hands raised. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can you please give me a quick overview of this particular bill? I know, I know you just got it. It came from another committee, but I was wondering if you can kind of give us the highlights on it. I can. I think I may. We are. Uh, honored to be joined by the chair of the PND committee, House Chair of the PND committee, Representative McCarthy Bay, where the bill originated. So I may defer to her to take, take the lead on this one. Representative McCarthy Bay, if you're able to provide an overview of the online bill, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, as a proud member of the GAE committee, I'm happy to share and answer any questions. Uh, the bill that has been referred from planning and development uh, clarifies or defines a board of education vacancy beyond a clear resignation to be such that a failure to take the oath within 60 days of either election uh, or of appointment being chosen is would be a vacancy. And it then further specifies how that vacancy should be filled when there is not a special act uh, municipal charter or ordinance language in a community. And in this case, the remaining board of education members would be the ones to appoint until the next regular election, at which time an election would occur to fill the remainder of the vac vacancy. If there is an election within uh, fewer than 60 days away, the vacancy would be filled uh, via an election. And again, that would be for the unexpired portion of the term. Thank you, Representative McCarthy, Bay, Representative Francesco, any further questions or comments? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, Representative um, Behe, um, so 
currently right now is the current regulation that the town manager or selectman or mayor would make that appointment should the board of ed not do it within a specific time frame would that be the current language right now through you mr chairman representative mccarthy Bay. thank you mr chair and through you uh the the impetus for this law is that there has been litigation in some communities because the statute that is not clear in cases again where there is not a special act where there is not municipal charter language or an ordinance in a community. So this language would clarify that indeed the Board of Education would be clearly the uh, body that would be able to appoint for a vacancy in its own membership. Representative Ashton Rochesco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, I'm my question was that what the current process is right now is that the first selectman and so forth would make that appointment. If I'm understanding this bill correctly, that power is now taken away from that, the first selectman, town manager, whatever, and given the full authority to the Board of Education. Is that correct through you, Mr. Chairman? Senator McCarthy Bay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Chair, I, I might suggest uh, with your permission, uh, perhaps a, a question to our attorneys. However, my understanding of the current language is that it's not clear. In other words, the good representative is saying that the power is currently with the chief elected officials. And the reason for the bill is that there is a lack of clarity in language, but uh, I would of course defer to um, I, and I hate to put Mr. Tellerico on the spot. I know he has overlap with p and I'm not certain if he was the person who worked with us um, on this bill in particular, but again, the bill seeks to clarify because there is not current clarity uh, as the good representative is suggesting. Thank you, Representative Attorney Tellerico, do you have any comments? Uh, uh, sure, and, and with the committee's indulgence, um, I do have some overlap with the P&D committee. Uh, so section one of the bill, as you reference, Representative Master Francesco, states that under, uh, if in the absence of some sort of local charter or special act type provision, um, it is the board of selectmen or the chief executive authority that will do the appointing uh, if the remaining members of a board have that authority, but fail to make that appointment within 30 days. What the bill seeks to do is saying that specifically with regard to boards of ed only, that authority retains with the board of ed members and this section one provision doesn't get triggered, not for boards of ed. For other boards and commissions, sure, but not for boards of ed. Thank you, Attorney Tellerico. Representative Master Fresco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, I, I, I guess I was reading it co correctly. That authority is now taken away from the first selectman and so forth and given sole ownership, I guess, or authority to the Board of Education. Um, I'm just curious through you, Mr. Chairman, and I know it doesn't specify party in here. So I'm thinking of a scenario where um, election is held, whether it's a Democrat or Republican that was elected, and now the person leaves for some reason, now the Board of Education is going to replace that person. Could the Board of Education re replace that person um, if they were elected a Democrat, can they replace them with a Republican? If they were elected, the person who left was a Republican replaced with a Democrat or unaffiliated or independent through you, Mr. Chairman. Representative McCarthy Bay. And thank you, Mr. Chair. And you can see uh, we work together as a team and I wanna thank Mr. Tellerico, Attorney Tellerico. Um, my understanding and uh, my apologies, I do not actually have the language in front of me at the moment is that the bill language does not specify with respect um, to party. And again, I would defer to the, the good attorney if I am incorrect in that. Thank you, Representative. And I turn Tellerico, I think there's a minority majority representation issue. Would that be correct, Attorney Tellerico? 
yes, yes, I believe that is correct. Obviously, this current bill doesn't speak to it, but we do have um, Section 9-160A of the general statutes that does speak to minority representation on boards and commissions. So I, I believe that would uh, kick in. Uh, can you repeat that statute, please, Attorney General Tell Rico? 9-1. 9-167A, and the A is part of the section name, not, not subsection A. Understood. Thank you, sir. Representative Master Francesco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I guess I would ask this question to uh, Mr. Tellerico, if it's if that's okay with you, Mr. Chairman. So in sections 9-167A of the current statutes, there is a minority representation. <clears throat> for if, if there was a board or board of education that had, for example, a super majority, in that particular case, let's say the board is made up of nine people, six of them are one party, three are the other party. And somebody that has that was in the six, well, I'll just say was a Republican, for example. The part, the the, uh, the the majority of the party had six people. One of those persons had left. Now the Board of Education decides to replace that person. Can that person be replaced? When you talk about a minority group, so technically the Democrats would be in the minority because there's only three. Can the Board of Education replace that Republican with a Democrat in that particular case when it comes to a board that's made up of a supermajority? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative. Uh, Attorney Tellerico, do you have a response then? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, subsection D of 9-167A uh, states that any vacancy thereafter occurring, which is to be filled by appointment, shall be filled by the appointment of a member of the same political party as that of the vacating member. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, that did on that particular case. My concern here is that, you know, it's, it's many times we see odds with our Board of Education and our sadly, our Board of Educations and our first selectmen and mayors and so forth. And I think um, they truly try to work in a bipartisan fashion. But I think this first selectmen certainly should have that authority uh, going forward. And those are my concerns with this bill is to giving the full power to the Board of Education because I don't want it to get completely partisan, right? Right now you have a balance of both. And this would actually take the power away from that person and giving its sole power to the Board of Education which in that particular case could make it partisan. Uh, right now, in my opinion, it's really done on a nonpartisan basis because they're, I'm sure they're trying to work together for that replacement. Um, and I believe the input of both the, uh, the manager, the, the, the mayor of the town and so forth certainly is important um, and they should have some input on it. And those were my concerns with this, but um, I know it's complicated, but I appreciate you answering my questions on this. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Tellerico and uh, Representative Fahey. I appreciate you taking the time to answer my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Mastrofesco, for your comments. Uh, Representative McCarley Bay, your hand is raised, literally. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you for uh, the opportunity to comment. I am not on this device, figuring out my hand raise function, so my apologies. Um, I did just want to underscore the fact that the uh, the answer by Mr. Tellerico that the um, the bill before us does not change anything in terms of the, the party process and appointment. I do understand and respect that concern. I will also say that current law um, notes for for all town boards and commissions that unless otherwise specified by law that the remaining members of a body do appoint the vacancy. And then actually this bill would clarify that if those bodies don't do so within 30 days, uh, the board of selectmen or the chief elected official um, may appoint to fill that vacancy. So just that it is those bodies themselves in current law that do appoint their own members when there is a vacancy. And by changing the law in this way, we would be consistent with that as well. Um, I do hope that we can move this bill forward and support it. Uh, and I certainly, again, appreciate and respect those comments uh, with respect to party and uh, thank Mr. Tellerico. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative. Representative Palm, your hand raised, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to the proponent, uh, Rep. McCarthy Vahey, can you uh, answer this? I'm, I'm looking at the original bill language and it says in the statement of purpose that um, it could be filled by the remaining members of the board or at the next regular town election. Does that mean that the select person or mayor could override an election by the public uh, or, or has the intent of this bill changed over time? by the time it originally was proposed and by the time it's now gotten to us. I guess my concern is, are we, are we obviating the ability of the public to weigh in? Representative McCarthy Bay. Mr. Chair. Representative McCarthy Bay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I thank the representative for the question. If the vacancy occurs with fewer than 60 days before the next election, then it is the voters who would choose to fill the vacancy. So the, the vacancy would be filled if it were 60 or more days prior to an election. And that has not changed. Thank you very much. Um, that's it, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Representative Pomeroy, for the question or comments. Seeing that, will the clerk please call the roll? House Bill 6108, Jan Floor. Flexer. Senator Flexer votes yes. Fox. Representative Fox votes yes. Haskell. Senator Haskell. Thomas. Representative Thomas votes yes. Sampson. Senator Sampson. Master Francesco. Representative Master Francesco votes no. Blumenthal. Representative Blumenthal votes yes. Carpino. Representative Carpino votes no. Fishbein. Representative Fishbein. France. Representative Franz. Haddad. Representative Haddad. Labriola. Representative Labriola. McCarthy Vehi. Representative McCarthy Vehi votes yes. McCrory. Senator McCory votes yes. Morin Bello. Representative Morin Bello votes yes. Palm. Representative Palm. Representative Palm votes yes. Rosario. Representative Rosario votes yes. Santiago. Santiago votes yes. Slap. Senator Slap votes yes. All set, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on, item number four under subsection three, Substitute for House Bill 6476, an act concerning a disparity study referred to us in the Labor Committee. Is there a motion? Senator Flexer makes a motion to JF this bill to the floor. So move. Motion made Second. by Senator Flexer and moved by Senator McCrory. Any comments or discussion? Over the master, Francesca, hands raised, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a quick question for clarification. I remember in this committee, we passed a bill very similar to this, uh, it was unanimous vote on this committee. And I see it here again. I believe it was number 1052. And I was just curious, and we and I think we had a unanimous support on this committee. I was just curious why we have another bill coming to us with this. I believe it has the same language. Could there, if not, can you tell me what's different between this bill and the one that our committee put together and passed here through you, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Senator Fletcher. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe this bill is identical. I can't speak to uh, why the same concept was raised in the Labor Committee, but I believe the House referred it to us since uh, we have cognizance of these types of issues. Representative Francesco. 
Um, thank you. I just needed clarification. As I just don't know why we would take up another bill. We already passed it in our committee, but I certainly understand the process and just needed some clarification. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any further questions or comments from members of the committee? If not, will the clerk please call the roll? House Bill 6476, Jeff to Flexer. Senator Flexer votes yes. Fox. Representative Fox votes yes. Haskell. Senator Haskell. Thomas. Rep. Thomas votes yes. Sampson. Senator Sampson. Mastro Francesco. Representative Mastro Francesco votes yes. Blumenthal. Representative Blumenthal votes yes. Carpino. Representative Carpino votes yes. Fishbein. Representative Fishbein. France. Representative France. Haddad. Representative Haddad. Labriola. Representative Labriola. McCarthy Vehi. Representative McCarthy Vehi votes yes. McCrory. Senator McCrory votes yes. Morin Bello. Representative Morin Bello votes yes. Palm. Representative Palm. Representative Palm votes yes. Rosario. Representative Rosario votes yes. Representative Rosario votes yes. Santiago. Santiago votes yes. Slap. Senator Slap votes yes. Haskell. Senator Haskell. All set, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, seeing that there are no other bills before our committee, uh, we will hold votes open until noon time. Thank all the members for the participation this morning. Good seeing everyone and look forward to seeing you again soon. Maybe we'll set a recess. I think I, missed, think, I think I missed some votes, uh, Madam Clerk. This is Senator McCory. Yes, if you missed Madam the vote, if you missed the vote uh, for all the members that missed votes, please raise your hand and I will um, call on you by the hands raised in that order. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, if you're all set, I can take the votes. Okay, it's all set. Let's see. Senator McCrory, you missed the vote on House Bill 5310. I, I vote yes. Senator McCrory um, votes yes. Is that, is that the only one? No. Um, House Bill 5736. Senator McCoy votes yes. That's it. You're all set, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Slap, um, House Bill 5310. Senator Slap votes yes. You're all set, Senator. That's only what you missed. Thanks so much. Have a good night. You too. You too. Representative Morimbello. House Bill 5310. Representative Morimbello votes yes. House Bill 5736. Representative Morimbello votes yes. You're all set, Representative. Thank you, Valentina. Thank you. Representative Haddad. House Bill 5310. 
that was Representative Hannon votes yes. House Bill 5736. Representative Haddad votes yes. House Bill 6108. Representative Haddad votes yes. House Bill 6476. Representative Haddad votes yes. You're all set, Representative. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Labriola. Hi, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good. House Bill 5310. I'm a yes. House Bill 5736. I am a no. House Bill 6108. I am a no. House Bill 6476. I am a yes. You're all set, Representative. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Representative Blumenthal. Uh, yes, Madam Clerk. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any votes. Let me, I'm checking right now. You're all set, Representative. You did not you. miss any. Thank you. Have you too, thanks. Senator Haskell, whenever you're ready, I'll be here to take your votes. Hi, Senator Sampson. Hi, Valentina, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, I just wanna cast my votes. Yes, um, House Bill 5736. Forgive me a second, that's number two, right? The Veterans yes. Bill? I yes. am a no. Senator Sampson votes no. House Bill 6108. Refresh my memory. <laughs> Uh, an act concerning Board of Education vacancies. Yeah. Senator Sampson votes no. House Bill 6476. The disparity study. Okay, uh, Senator Sampson votes yes. You're all set, Senator. All right, very good. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Valentina. Hi, Senator Haskell. I was listening in, but I was at the dentist, so I couldn't vote. <laughs> That's okay. Um, House Bill 5310, Senator. Senator Haskell votes yes. House Bill 5736. Senator Haskell votes yes. House Bill 6108. Senator Haskell votes yes. House Bill 6476. Senator Haskell votes yes. House Bill 
You're all set, Senator. Thanks so much. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.
Hi, Representative. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Yeah, I was just getting ready to send an email to you. Just let her show us in the waiting room, but I uh, appreciate you. <laughs> um, uh, All right, so we have four bills, uh, correct? Yes, yes. Um, uh, we can start from the beginning, House Bill 5310. Yep. So 5310? Yes. Uh, vote yes. Yes, okay. Okay, 5736. Okay. Vote no. No. 6108. Okay. Vote no. no. And 6476, vote yes. Okay, you're all set, Representative. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.